Oil prices are skyrocketing this morning as the fighting in Ukraine intensifies and U.S. lawmakers are pushing for the Biden administration to ban imports of Russian oil. Gasoline prices also skyrocketing, topping $4 a gallon for the first time in a decade. You see the moves in oil up 6 percent on crude and Brent gasoline above $4 a gallon right now and higher in some places across the country. Joining me right now is Kansas Senator and Senate Energy Committee member Roger Marshall. Senator, thanks so much for being here. Finally, we've got this conversation active about banning Russian imports. You introduced legislation last week that calls on the White House to ban all U.S. imports of Russian oil. Tell me about that bill. And do you think what are the odds that they'll actually go for this in, in the White House? Well, Maria, that's a great question. All of America thinks that we should ban Russian oil except for one person and that's Joe Biden. But American energy independence is a message we've been preaching uh, for a year. I grew up in the oil patch. I know exactly how important affordable energy is to make this economy run. Uh, but Joe Biden has declared an all out war on oil. It's not just uh, pipelines. It's also the, the, the Federal Reserve. It's the EPA. It's, it's the uh, Interior Department. They've all declared war on drilling oil. But look, there is a good appetite up here. Uh, Joe Manchin stepping up once again. You talk about our profile and encourage Joe Manchin stepping up to help lead the Democrats. But the president's going to have to admit his mistake for once and let us turn this policy around. Well, I mean, you if you had uh, the uh, XL pipeline, you would have actually taken care of this problem. But on day one, Joe Biden canceled the XL pipeline. Uh, Senator, you have an op-ed, a new op-ed in the Kansas City Star discussing how Russia's invasion of Ukraine impacts the global food supply as well. Let's talk about the food supply as we watch oil prices skyrocket. You write this. The bottom line is that a continuing conflict that inhibits Ukrainian farmers' ability to plant and and harvest means the price of corn and other commodities could explode. The price of wheat also surging to the highest price since 2008. Senator, we're already talking about inflation at 40 year highs. Is this getting worse? Yeah, you're right, Maria. I'm not sure what you're feeling at the grocery store, but it feels like 20 percent increases to me and it's going to get worse. Here in the next three weeks, Ukraine should be planting corn. Ukraine exports over 12 percent of the world supply of wheat and corn exports. Meanwhile, in China, they're doubling, they're tripling their hogs. They have uh, huge buildings of, uh, of, of, pig, of pig farms growing up in uh, urban areas. And what do those pigs eat? They eat corn. Uh, and beyond that, about goodness, almost half of the world supply, a third of the world supply of wheat and corn come through the through the Black Sea as well. And finally, fertilizer prices are doubling and quadrupling. Fertilizer, nitrogen-based fertilizers are made from natural gas as well. So this is driving up the cost of production for the American farmer. And then additionally, one of the leading exporters in the world, I can't even get their corn crop in the ground. Senator, what does the legislative calendar look like this week? What should we expect uh, in terms of actual uh, business done this week? Well, you know, the Democrats aren't going to let a good crisis go to waste. So I think most Republicans agree that, that trying to get the Ukrainians $10 billion more of help is a great idea, trying to get those MiG jets from Poland into uh, Ukraine and then backfilling them somehow. But, but the Democrats are going to try to tie this to another $22 trillion of COVID relief. They're sitting on over $100 billion that they haven't used, but they want more. And then they're going to tie it to the omnibus. So it's very frustrating that we can't carve this piece piece of the puzzle out and vote on it today. Uh, and evidently, the Democrats cannot walk and chew gum at the same time. So it's been a frustrating couple of weeks up here. Uh, very little has gotten done well, in, the past, in the past month. I mean, Senator, we spoke a couple of weeks ago and you had a bill. You wanted to reverse and end this emergency around COVID. And you were expecting Joe Biden to actually say, yes, the emergency is over. And yet he extended it. Right. So this is the difference between Joe Biden and President Zelensky. One person says what they d does, what they say they're going to do. And the other one says one thing, but does to another. Uh, Joe Biden wants to use this crisis as an opportunity to borrow more money to expand his big government socialism. Look, infections are down. New infections wow. are down 99 percent. Ninety five percent of Americans have some level of immunity. It's time to let our people go. Let those decisions be made locally and, and let our economy, let our schools get back to normal. 
Yep. Senator, it's great to have you uh, on the program. Thanks very much for your leadership. Senator Roger Marshall joining us. Thank you, sir.